attacked by an invincible brain-eating monster. It's a scary to go into a coma and, and I don't want to die. We're having a party uh, at, a, at a park and it, it's a summer day. It's really, really hot and Wendy starts feeling bad. She wasn't able to continue to play, so we decide to leave. I'm kind of in shock because this headache just keeps getting worse. I decide to take her to the emergency room. They do a physical test. Uh, they check my eyes. And so they're telling me that my headaches are coming from being out in the sun all day and being dehydrated. But Wendy's sister, Paula, isn't so sure. I don't think that this is just a regular headache. I think it's more to it, so I demand for the doctors to do an MRI. The MRI scans reveal that Wendy's brain has started to swell. It is under attack. After several hours, they return and they tell me that I have 10 to 15 parasites um, around my brain. I'm shocked. The parasites in Wendy's brain are insisted pork tapeworms. The pork tapeworm has two hosts, humans and pigs. The parasite forms cysts in the tissues of a pig. If a human eats undercooked pork that contains the cysts, they get infected. In the human gut, the cysts hatch into adult tapeworms, where they can grow up to several meters long. The adult worms lay eggs that are passed in human feces. Wendy grew up in Bolivia. And doctors think that as a child, she ate some food contaminated with egg-laden feces. The eggs developed into larvae that burrowed into her brain and formed cysts. For years, these cysts lie dormant and produce no symptoms. But slowly, the cysts start to grow releasing toxins into the tissue and causing the brain to become dangerously inflamed. A family of killers is breathing inside a man's lungs. When I woke up and saw the blood on my pillow, it did scare me. I wasn't sure what to think. Oklahoma resident Tony Brixey has been sick for weeks with a persistent cough, but his condition takes a dramatic turn when he begins coughing up blood. Tony and his wife Misty start to panic. When I saw all of the blood in the toilet, I was really scared that something was very wrong with him. The doctor didn't really know what to think. <laughs> he refers Tony to a pulmonologist who takes a closer look at his lungs. And right away, he sees something shocking. They actually did a, a scope down into my lungs and saw little black specks. What they found was an object or objects that actually looked like eggs. It is a parasitic worm commonly found in Asia and South America called Paragonimus calicati, or the lung fluke. It lives and breeds in the lungs, causing chronic inflammation. In serious cases, the lung fluke is deadly. Once inside the host, the parasite burrows through the body's tissues in search of its breeding grounds, the lungs. The fluke causes inflammation in the host's lungs, making the host cough up blood that is laden with parasitic eggs. The egg-laden blood is re-swallowed and passed out of the body in the feces. perfect little boy something came into his body and destroyed vision in his eye four-year-old Christopher Durant has been attacked by the sight-stealing parasite Toxicara leaving him blind in one eye dogs are the main transmitters of the Toxicara parasite Larvae are transmitted to puppies via their mother's milk. 
Once in the intestine, they penetrate the gut wall and circulate around the puppy's body. When the larvae become adults, they lay eggs in the intestine, which are passed in the feces. If the eggs are eaten by another dog, the life cycle continues. Dogs are not usually harmed by the parasite. But if the parasitic eggs are eaten by a human, it's a different story. In Chris's case, the parasite made it to his eye, damaging it beyond repair. Toxicara is a parasitic worm. When the eggs enter the human body, they hatch into larvae in the intestine. The larvae travel through the body in the blood, attacking the body's tissues. The body's immune system fights and kills the parasite, causing inflammation in the affected tissues. This isn't usually a problem. But if by chance the parasite reaches the eye, the inflammation can damage the retina. And the result is blindness. The damage done by the parasite is irreversible. Christopher may never see out of his left eye again. A doctor battles a deadly enemy that's been hiding in his body for 60 years. He looked awful. He looked like he was on death's door. Mohamed Mia is suffering from an inflammatory bowel disease. But instead of responding to treatment, his condition has rapidly worsened. The only way for the doctors to get a look at Mohamed's intestine is to open him up. When they perform the surgery, the doctors make a shocking discovery. There was a clear abnormality. Mohamed's small bowel is swollen to twice its normal size. The biopsy reveals that Mohamed Mia's bowels have become home to a parasitic worm called Strongyloides. Strongyloides, also known as threadworm, is a parasitic worm that lives and hides in the small bowel. This parasite can hide within the human host for years prior to discovery. But it also uses deception to get into the body. It has the ability to be free living in the soil, usually from a fecal contaminated soil. And it burrows its way through the skin, making its way into the small blood vessels and eventually can enter into the lungs. From there, they climb up the bronchial tube and are swallowed back down into the gut. In the small bowel, they molt twice and become adult female worms. The females thread themselves in and out of the lining of the small bowel, causing inflammation. Strongyloides is a killer. It can cause major tissue damage, acute respiratory failure, and eventually death. a traveler's blood. He said it was very, very critical that you get to medicine that quickly, otherwise you're dead. I've been to Africa 11 times. We were there three and a half months ago, and I was there for a little over three weeks. But two weeks into the trip, Dwight suddenly starts to feel unwell. I just started to feel very, very weak. One day you wake up and you're just, you're so weak that you can't hardly get out of bed. I just got weaker and weaker and weaker until I was so weak I couldn't stand on my own. What's astounding is that the illness that has Dwight fighting for his life started with a simple fly bite. Africa is a big place and there's different animals, different pests in different places, but in Tanzania, you have the titsy flies. They are about the size of a house fly and normally a little bit bigger, but they're just extremely aggressive and you just hate to have them pestering you all day long. But the tsetse fly that bit Dwight wasn't just a nuisance. It was infected with a deadly parasite, a single-celled killer called trypanosoma. And when the fly bit him, these parasites flooded into Dwight's bloodstream. 
Inside his body, these cunning intruders began to divide and elongate. They used their long tails, called flagellum, to swim throughout his bloodstream. The result is a severe case of trypanosomiasis, or African sleeping sickness. Dwight's immune system is helpless to stop the microscopic assassins. Each individual trypanosoma parasite is armed with a shield of proteins. In the bloodstream, white blood cells recognize these proteins as foreign, and they build up antibodies that attack the proteins. But trypanosomes can actually change their protein coat of armor, rendering the blood's antibodies useless. This leaves them free to reproduce and devastate the body's red blood cells, the very cells that carry nutrients and oxygen throughout the body. Starved of nutrients, the patient goes into a coma and ultimately dies. infected with the deadliest parasite on the planet. Maybe this is it. I've never, you know, faced death before. It's a Saturday. I'm at home. I wake up in a cold sweat. I get a fever and a headache. And now I start to get the chills. I'm concerned, and I, I want to try to find out what this might be. On call is Dr. Daniel Koblipsky, an expert on infectious diseases. In listening to Kelly's story, we're hearing about fevers that are recurring every 48 hours. And there is a certain thing about fever patterns that are very important to listen to and understand. We asked Kelly if she had been anywhere outside the country in the past year. I tell them that nine months ago, I took my honeymoon to Africa. The doctors return to Kelly's blood sample. Kelly has some very abnormal labs. It looks like there's a problem with her blood. There's evidence that red blood cells are being broken open. As we try to figure out all these different abnormalities on her peripheral blood smear, uh, the one thing that can put it all together is malaria. Malaria is caused by a tiny parasite called plasmodium. I can't believe I have parasites in my blood. The parasite is transmitted from host to host by an insect, the mosquito. When an infected mosquito bites a human, the parasites enter the bloodstream and travel to the liver where they reproduce. The new parasites then move back into the bloodstream and attack red blood cells. There, they multiply rapidly and eventually break the cell apart from within. And legions of new parasites re-enter the bloodstream and start the attack all over again. I'm very scared and very afraid. 